In the last segment, we talked about using the InfiniSpan Cluster Manager with Vertex. <coughs> and to support making that happen, we needed to be able to take some configuration options. And I showed you a quick and dirty way to use uh, a system property that you could pass in through the Java command line. But that's not exactly the easiest way to configure things and, and certainly not very elegant. So in this session, I'm going to show you how we can use Vertex's config module to allow us to better handle configuration parameters, configuration settings coming into our application. So again, we're going to hop back into the POM file and modify the project settings and add the Vertex config dependency. Now I want to call out here, Vertex core is under a megabyte. Vertex web is another, like, I don't know, 400k, 500k. InfiniSpan, another four or five hundred K. Vertex config, another two or three hundred K. All of this is very, very small. And the only transitive dependency here with Vertex Core is Jetty, or I'm sorry, Netty, the, the low-level async I.O. library for Java, and Jackson for JSON processing. And we'll talk more about JSON processing today. So instead of passing this system property for HTTP port, let's instead use the Vertex config module. And we're going to start off with a config store options. And we'll call this our default config config store options. And we're going to use that fluent API again. We're going to say set type is file set format is json set config new json object dot put path config dot json so what we've done there is we're telling vertex that we want to have a new config store that is a file in the format of JSON, and the path to it is the root of the class path config.json. <coughs> now we could put a real path here, you know, some path to config.json. But uh, for our default, we're just going to bake that JSON directly into our application. And so over here in our resources directory, we're going to create a new file config.json and we're going to give it an HTTP key that has a port field. Pretty simple JSON, nothing special here. But we could continue adding configuration options to this. Now, we've configured the config store, now we need a config retriever. So we'll set up our config retriever options. And again, using that fluent API, we'll add the store default config. And lastly, we need to make an async call to load that configuration. Now, we could have multiple configuration stores and add more than one store to this configuration config retriever options. And what would happen is the first one loaded would be all the base configuration. Every subsequent one in order would override any matching parameters in the lower level configs. So if we had, for example, add store some other and dot add store yet another and yet another had an HTTP port value this one would take precedence over any of the ones previously moving back to our config retriever we're gonna say config retriever uh, 
config retriever equals config retriever dot create vertex and our config retriever options. And to actually do the retrieving, we say config dot retriever. get config and we're going to get an asynchronous result now because we won't have the config until we're inside of this block we need to move our create HTTP server call and we also need to say if async result succeeded and only if it succeeded are we going to try to provision our HTTP server. Else, well, figure out what to do here. So at this point, we should get a JSON object from the async result result method. And we can get the HTTP portion of that and finally we could grab our HTTP port get integer The problem we're going to have with this is that this method, this start method, is going to go through here and this is an asynchronous operation. So this may or may not immediately execute as soon as we hit this code path. In fact, it's going to jump over and the application is going to assume that everything is happy, go lucky, and running properly at this point even though this may not have resolved yet. So in Vertex, we can specify a different start method signature where it takes a promise. And in this case, the promise has a type of void. And what we can say down here is that if and only if we've completely configured our HTTP server, we can say start dot complete. And to handle our error here, if there is one, we can say start dot fail, unable to load configuration. And with that, we have a configuration management system added to our Vertex application. Now we've talked a couple of times before these lambdas can be a little difficult to read and parse and test. So we're also going to break this out into a new method. And this new method we'll call void handle config results and it needs to accept a promise of type void and it needs to accept a JSON object with the config oh actually no it's not a JSON object it's our async result of type JSON object async result. Oh, and we also need to bring in our router object. So our router router. And how do we call that here without making a huge mess again anyway? Well, we'll create a curried 
function. And the way we can do this is we can say async, or actually handler of type async result of type JSON object handler equals uh, and the only parameter we really want to pass is our async result and it's going to call this dot handle config results and we're going to pass in start router async result ah, we forgot to import handler and then we can just put a reference to that handler right there. So basically this lambda is being assigned to a variable and we're passing that variable here. But at this point, this method is completely testable, this method is completely testable, this method is completely testable, and so on down the road. All right, let's check and make sure that our configuration loads. So we'll run maven, clean, compile, vertex, run. And as expected, we see that the application started up properly. And it's answering responses, API v1, hello. It's returning results as we would expect. Now, there's only one instance running, so we should only see the one UUID. And we've started using vertex config stores. Now, in a later video, when we get ready to start talking about deploying this to the cloud, I'll show you how to use config store options, which will let you pull your configuration from things like Kubernetes or your cloud providers or your runtime platforms as well. And I'll see you in the next episode.